Hello, everyone. Um, I'm just waiting for some people to come along and join this Facebook Live for Pink Warrior Calendar Girls. <coughs> um, my name is Christine Lewis, and I'm founder of Pink Warrior Calendar Girls. I am. Um, I started <coughs> Pink Warrior Calendar Girls shortly after um, going to a photo shoot um, to kind of um, celebrate all I overcame as a breast cancer survivor and learn to feel confident in my new skin. Um, everyone kind of learns a new normal as a breast cancer survivor. Um, we go into breast cancer uh, treatment thinking that once we're done with chemo or radiation or a mastectomy, a majority of our treatment, that once we're done, that's it. And um, that's not really the case for most of us. I don't know any breast cancer survivors who have um, felt like that on the other end. It's basically a new normal that they deal with. Um, so uh, I'm still waiting for some people to come on. Um, if you come on to this live uh, video, please let me know if you are um, live by typing in a one. If you're on the replay, type in a two. Um, also, I'm really curious to know where you're from. I'm getting a lot of traffic to my website, to pinkwarriorcalendargirls.com, and I get people from all over the world. It's really interesting to look at the analytics and the traffic. Um, I get people from Australia, from the United Kingdom, um, <coughs> from India, uh, all over the world. Um, so I really am curious to know where you're from and um, if you're on the uh, live or the replay, uh, don't hesitate to um, ask me any questions because I will go back after the live and try to answer a uh, majority of them depending on um, the reaction that I get on the videos. So um, drop me a one if you're live, or a two if you're watching this um, as a replay. If you think that someone can relate to what I'm about to talk about in the middle of the um, video, you can feel free to tag them by all means. Um, if it's something that uh, is going to have been them, like don't tag them if you're just if you're nagging them. And you'll understand what I mean in a few minutes when we go over what I'm going to talk about. So um, I would like to uh, do uh, through Pink Warrior Calendar Girls, the Facebook page for Pink Warrior Calendar Girls. My goal is to try to have one live video a week where I see how everybody's doing. And you can message me if you would like, if you want any prayers. Or um, let me know if there are any topics that you would like me to cover in the future, and I'll try to get to them. Um, I'm basically looking for people that want to join me as Pink Sisters and go over certain topics. Um, since this is a morning broadcast, I am going to try to uh, at least weekly cover something that I've read in the Bible and something I've had about a week to chew over in my mind and um, tell you where I'm coming from. And I'm curious to see what, uh, how you see things. So I would like to cover Jeremiah 24. Um, I know that title was a little weird. It said, uh, is your life tasty to God? Um, this is a passage I would never really looked at before. And I've read the Bible through twice in my life. I do read the try to read the Bible um, on a frequent basis, and I'm trying to get back to reading it every day, and I came across this one. I'll read it to you verbatim, and then I'll tell you what I got from it. Okay, so this is Jeremiah 24, the good and the bad figs. 
After King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had deported Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, the officials of Judah, and the craftsmen and metalsmiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon, the Lord showed me two baskets of figs placed in front of the temple of the Lord. One basket contained very big figs, like early figs, but the other basket contained very bad figs, so bad they were inedible. The Lord said to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? I said, figs. The good figs are very good, but the bad figs are extremely bad, so bad they're inedible. The word of the Lord came to me. This is what the Lord of the God of Israel says. Like these good figs, so I regard as good the exiles from Judah. I sent away from this place to the land of the Chaldeans. I will keep my eyes on them for their good and will return them to this land, and I will build them up and not demolish them. I will plant them and not uproot them. I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their God because they will return to me with all their heart. But as for the bad figs, it's so bad, they are inedible. This is what the Lord says. In this way, I will deal with King Zedekiah of Judah, his officials in the remnant of Jerusalem, those remaining in this land or living in the land of Egypt. I will make them the object of horror and a disaster to all the kingdoms of the earth and an example of disgrace, scorn, ridicule, and cursing wherever I, am, I have banished them. I will send the sword, famine, and plague against them until they have perished from the land I gave to them and their ancestors. I don't know about you, but I am the type that likes to focus on the positive. I really don't like hellfire, damnation, and negative stuff that I read in the Bible, but it does need to be covered. But I'm trying to focus on the positive here. Um, so this basically covers the good and the bad figs. There were two baskets placed in front of the temple of the Lord. One basket was full of very good figs, and another was... Uh, full of figs that you don't want to eat. Um, I don't know how many of you eat figs. I, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I have a subscription to um, Imperfect Produce, and I usually go ahead and get the order. Sometimes if I have too much produce in the refrigerator, I will cancel it for a week or two. The last package that I got, um, because I don't buy all the produce they have. I don't like the prices on everything, or I don't eat all that type of produce that they have available. I'll buy some non-produce items, and I got a jar of big spread that I'm looking forward to trying out on some flatbread, maybe with some mushrooms and chicken or, or bacon or something. I try to be careful about the bacon. Uh, I can cover that in a different live. I don't want to lose track of what I'm covering here. But anyway, um, fig spread, it's pretty sweet, and it can give you some nutrition, and figs and dates and olives and avocados and the kind, those kinds of things are from the Middle East, where um, Jeremiah was probably from somewhere over there, I'm assuming. I am not a theologian. I'm just a layperson. But God, uh, in summarization, God did ask Jeremiah what he saw. And he said, well, I see the good figs are very good. But the bad figs are so bad, you can't, you can't eat them. I mean, do you want to eat something that's nasty, that's, um, that is uh, inedible? It's probably dry or stale. I wouldn't. Um, so he said that the good figs, the exiles from Judah that were sent away from that place, uh, from the land of the Ch Chaldeans, he was going to keep their eyes on them. I don't think that's a creepy thing. I think that's kind of like sending angels to watch over someone. Um, you're are, um, like a cop driving by to make sure things are safe. I don't think he's being like sting in uh, every breath you take, which is a little creepy. <laughs> 
but he's um, saying that he's basically looking out for you and um, wanting the best for you. <coughs> and he's he promised he was going to restore their land. He said he would build them up and not demolish them. He would plant them and not uproot them. What kind of things, if you were a farmer, would you want to plant? Are you going to want to plant things that are going to be fruitless or they're going to taste nasty or stale or putrid and nasty taste? I don't think I would want to eat that kind of stuff. But if it's juicy and sweet, those are the kind of things that I would want to taste. Uh, we're made in God's image. So just think about that for a minute. Um, of course, if you were a farmer, you would want to plant things that are going to yield tasty crops, not nasty crops. So um, when I'm thinking about reading the word of God, I want to think about how I can improve my relationship with him. And uh, if I really love him and I'm really wanting to honor him, I'm going to want to produce tasty fruit in my relationship to him. Um, he said that the people that bear the uh, good figs are going to be his people and that he will be their God. He's not trying to be possessive there. He's trying to have a relationship with them they are pleasing and honoring him, and he is showing his approval of them. He's going to return them to, um, he's, uh, he's, they will return to me with all their heart. He knows that they have uh, love for him and a relationship that is positive toward him. Now, like I said, I do not like to fo focus on the negatives. But there are also um, bad figs, and we have to cover it because it's in the passage. This is how he'd deal with King Zedekiah of Judah, his officials and remnants of Jerusalem remaining in this land of Egypt. If you read up to Jeremiah 24, those people were evil and nasty. And if they were food, you wouldn't want to consume them. And he said they'd make them into an object of horror and disaster on a global level. They were an ex made as an example of disgrace, scorn, ridicule, cursing, uh, wherever they were banished. Um, he said they he would send sword to them, basically war, I'm assuming, and famine and plague um, until they're perished from all the earth and given um, from all the earth and the land that was given to their ancestors. So um, I don't know about you, but I want to focus on being a good dig in God's uh, yield. Um, I'm not trying to preach hellfire or damnation. It's just something that I personally got from that passage. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to do is take the struggles that I've been given, like breast cancer, and instead of um, sticking around and talking about the negatives of breast cancer, I, I do try to address those things because they're there and they're real and we should address them. But I don't stay in self-pity. Um, I want to focus on the positives and spread the positives. So I want to bear good fruit um, by um, sharing what I see in these passages with you. Um, if you have concerns and you need prayer, I know that when there are two or more people that want something um, like healing or like peace of mind, that Jesus is in the midst of them. And um, you're more likely to get that prayer answered. Um, I can't promise that it'll be answered in the way that you want, but you're more likely to get some answers and some peace. And um, God's will will be done for you. Um, so I'm, uh, as far as good fruit at this time for me personally, it is helping you all out uh, with encouragement and inspiration. 
Um, sometimes we need some humor to get our minds off of whatever we're dealing with. So I want to do that. Um, so basically anything I can do to bear good fruit and stay away from not being so tasty. So um, we're, we've been on here for a while, I think about 15 minutes. So I'm about to uh, get off, but I didn't want to leave you hanging here. Um, if you think that somebody could uh, benefit from this, please take them. But like I said before, you do not want to um, nag them. If this is something that's going, if you're just doing it to say, see, you need to do this, no. But if, the, if this is something they're searching for, yes, by all means, uh, take them. Um, so I'm going to try on the Pink Warrior Calendar Girls public page to come on here on a weekly basis and um, just see how you all are doing. Um, I know it's a public page, so we can't really, I don't want you to share things that you don't want to share in public. So I do have a private page, or you can message me um, through Pink Warrior Calendar Girls, and I will keep you on the prayer list. I have a private Pink Warrior Calendar Girls page. It is $10 a month. Um, you can go on there. There are other breast cancer support sites. You can go on there and get, uh, people will pray for you on those sites. I also have access on my private Pink Warrior Calendar Girls uh, page to some education and support to help you make the most out of your experience with breast cancer treatment and your new normal to help you optimize your life. Um, you, I will drop a link to uh, how you can join that. I think also a link to the private Facebook group and a link to the Pink Warrior Calendar Girls uh, website uh, where you can join and become a member of that private group. Um, it's $10 a month if you just want to try it out, but if you like it, it's $100 a year, and with that, you get the most current calendar sent to you so that you can, if you're in the midst of uh, chemo, radiation, your mastectomy, um, and other regular appointments, that could be shortly after a new diagnosis, or it could be um, if you had something return and you're having a lot of appointments, you have to have a place to put those appointments. I don't know about you, but I have a Google Calendar, but I really have a hard time getting, excuse me, it's really itching. I have a really hard time getting into the habit of checking that electronic calendar or that calendar online. I am still a, a pencil and paper type of person, old fashioned when it comes to calendars. So um, I get more benefit from a calendar like Pink Warrior Calendar Girls calendar. It's something that I can take with me. I don't have to worry about having trouble with Wi-Fi access. Um, I can just open it up and get to it. You will get that if you are a member, um, a, a yearly member. You will get that for your yearly subscription. So, uh, <clears throat> but I do invite you to join me um, at least once a week. Um, I think I said once a week, yeah, to um, just like, especially on Monday, to uh, see how you're doing and give you something to focus on. So this week, the focus was on, is my life tasty to God? Are you bearing good figs? Or um, are you bearing bad figs? And so you have a week to focus on that. Um, if you have anything you want to add to this discussion, feel free to put it in the comments. Um, <clears throat> I will go back after uh, this is no longer a live video and try to respond to those. So it is, uh, it has been about 19 or 20 minutes and I don't wanna keep you uh, hanging. I would just like to say that I am keeping you in my prayers for this week and I wish you a blessed week that's fruitful and that you are living in abundance. I do not mean that in a pocketbook type of way 
I mean that in a blessed life type of way that you are looking at every day to see all the possibilities where you can see God and see his blessings and, um, and grow in your love toward him. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.